In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the ignition coils on this Toyota Tacoma with a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. Let's install this TRQ ignition coil. We're going to have to make some space here so we can access everything. I'm going to start by removing this cable off of the bracket here. This is your throttle cable. You don't have to move it out of the way, you just have to unclip it from the bracket so you can push it aside as you work. And then at the front here, you'll see this cable. It leads down to the transmission, but it has a bolt, a 12 millimeter bolt here. We're gonna have to unbolt that so you can remove this bracket. It's much easier than popping this out of the bracket. Once that bolt is removed, you should be able to get this up and out of the way like that. Use a 10 millimeter socket and loosen up this clamp over here. You don't need to loosen that one. Now be careful because these a lot of times will seize up. So if you're not able to loosen it up easily, spray some rust penetrant on it, work it back and forth. I don't recommend using a Phillips head even though it does have a cutout for it because that usually strips. But these often rust and seize up and if you break it, you're gonna have to replace it. They do break easily. Let's do the same to the other one on the left side here. Once again, no need to remove them, just loosen them up so they release pressure off of this. And now you should be able to pull this part of the intake off. Mine is kind of stuck here because it's been on for a while. All right, so with that off, underneath this big resonator box here, there are actually two 12 millimeter mounting nuts. You can't see them, but you can feel them. I'm gonna remove both of those and that should allow us to pull this whole thing up. There's one, this is what they look like. And number two, and now this should pull right up and out. And of course, still has to come off of there. We also have a little vacuum hose here, unplug that. If it's really stuck, you can take a pocket screwdriver, to try to help it pop out of here. There we go, set that aside. Now in order to make a little bit extra space, you can take this clamp off so you can pull the whole thing off at once. You may not have to, but I prefer to do this. Same thing, loosen it up. Get this wire popped off of here. Another similar retainer in the back here. Then you can remove this. Now take this off of here. And now continue pulling this off. Back here, this wire clips on with one of these clips and uh, it's easiest if you pinch it and push it through. It's uh, pretty difficult to see, but you can also use a trim tool and kind of pry it out of the way. All right, and there's that. If you have a lot of debris here, vacuum it. You can blow it with some compressed air, just make sure it doesn't go down the intake there. Of course, the throttle body is closed, but you know, just make sure, I'm just gonna vacuum it. Now I'm only gonna show you how to do this on cylinder number one, because the process at this point is exactly the same for all the other ones. Of course, you should replace these items in sets, so do all four at once push down on the electrical connector here. Sometimes when these are old, you might need to help them out a little bit with a pocket screwdriver. Just make sure you don't pry too far up because you will break this. Put this out of the way. And then with a 10 millimeter socket, remove this bolt. With it out, you can now remove the ignition coil, set it aside. I like to put just a little bit of dielectric grease on the inside of the boot here, just on the sides. So you don't want to stuff it full. You don't want to put a lot in, otherwise it will break the connection between the spark plug and the ignition coil. Now that you have it coated, go ahead and drop it down into the cylinder, all the way down. I'm going to plug it in, make sure that clicks. And of course, put the bolt back on, start it by hand, bottom it out. And the torque for this, if you're able to torque it, is 66 inch pounds, it is very low. So if you are not able to torque it that low, just snug it up and give it about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. If not, once again, 66 inch pounds. That's it right there. That was pretty much spot on an eighth of a turn after it got snug. There you have it. Underneath this intake 
resonator that we took out here, you can see the two studs that I had to remove the two 12 millimeter mounting nuts from. So this is where they go once this is flipped over and you can see on this bracket, which hides underneath it, those are the holes they need to line it up with. And basically right underneath is where you want to reach to either take them off or put them on. So I just wanted to show that before I put this back in because it's pretty much impossible to see all this. Having said that, let's slide this piece in underneath these cables and then up and over this bracket and into that piece of the intake. However, I'm not going to tighten anything yet because I also took this off. So this has to go back on as well. Make sure you don't get these cables pinched or uh, make sure they go where they're supposed to. Also, make sure the clamps stay in place. The clamps are, uh, they fall off very easily basically, but you got to be careful for those. So now once everything is coupled back together, you want to move this around until it drops down into those mounting holes for the studs. Otherwise you can't clamp it down. It's going to be fairly difficult to see. There we go. All right. So now that this is in, before I tighten these clamps, I'm actually going to put those two mounting nuts on. That'll lock this piece in place and then I can make sure that everything is still seated on the clamp side and on the uh, ducting side. So I can make sure that there are no air leaks. Any air leaks past the mass airflow sensor would make the vehicle run very poorly, even a small leak. Okay, so both of those are started. Now with those on, before I forget, I'm gonna reattach this vacuum hose over here. This is for your fuel pressure regulator, very important. Let's snug these up. When you tighten these, you don't have to make them crazy tight. Just a little snug after they're bottomed out should be good enough. They're just holding in this uh, air box. No, they're just holding in this resonator, intake resonator. Okay, about an eighth of a turn at most. You don't want to break anything. All right, so that should be good to go. I know it's pretty much impossible to see any of this, but it's, it's in and uh, I'm gonna get these cables out of the way. There we go. So we attach that bracket. Resecure the bolt for the uh, cable here. And now with all of this secured and out of my way, once that's snug, let's make sure that all of these intake pieces are seated. And let's grab a 10 millimeter socket, tighten up all these clamps. When you tighten these, you want to make sure you don't over tighten them because not only can this bend like this, but it can also strip out the threads or completely break. So just a little snug. As long as you can't move it by hand, you're good to go. You know it's tight enough. Do that to all of them. Oh, see this one can still move a little bit. I'm gonna snug it a little more and it just stopped moving. So that's it. Same on this one over here. Of course, on this area where there's plastic, you don't want to over tighten them also because you don't want to break the plastic. This is resecured now, so let's move along. And don't forget about this wiring harness here. Clip it onto the back of this resonator there if you unclipped it. And then it has two little retainers that slide into the rubber piece here. Once you get that slid in, you're good to go. Turn on the engine, make sure it runs smoothly. If it doesn't, double check your electrical connectors as well as any vacuum leaks that may be present. Other than that, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.